Hello, hi, welcome to my channel. We're gonna talk about AI. With AI becoming more advanced with ChatGPT and other softwares that are kind of revolutionizing a lot of technology, it's no surprise that all the writers out there are starting to get a little bit worried about how it's going to impact the craft of writing, the art of writing, and the future of it. That intro was written by an AI. I am a writer, but I also work in a video tech kind of space. So AI is something that we've started implementing and it's kind of freaking me out just a little bit. Before I get too afraid and think that we're like devolving into Wally, -E, I think it's important to think about is AI actually going to replace writers? And I think that the answer is no, because who wants to read a book written by a robot? It's like Google, but it also writes things. It also acts as a virtual assistant. It can generate essentially anything with caveats. I'll get there. It's fed information from the internet from all around, and then it can like manipulate and produce different information. If I ask it to summarize chapter 40 of Pride and Prejudice, it could do it. It can produce that information in under two minutes. The initial instinct is like, we're gonna replace ourselves with technology. So I decided I was gonna see if that was true. In this, I wanna use AI as much as possible because I really do think that AI can be a great tool for writers. It's really difficult for a lot of people to like finish a book. Each step of the process is so involved. And I think there's an argument to be had about like, well, maybe it should be that involved. It's important that it's that involved. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use AI to generate every stage of the process, the characters, the character descriptions, the locations, the breakdown, the type of conflict that it is, everything. I'm gonna have AI generate that. I'm gonna have AI generate an outline for me and then I'm gonna write it and I'm gonna have AI write the same thing. And we're gonna see how things shape up. For prompts, we have like a lost and found, a haunted house, like an unexpected visitor coming, maybe a secret garden or time travel. Settings, we have an attic, a bakery, an amusement park, like a bustling street corner, and then a deserted island. So the conflict is where things got pretty interesting. So one of them's like choosing between a friend or doing the right thing, facing an unexpected health crisis, someone getting accused of a crime they didn't commit, a secret being revealed, um, being stuck in a dead end job, and then having to confront your own biases. Pretty basic conflict types, like if you were to look up in like a craft book, basic examples of different types of conflict where like most stories are based, it would be in that. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's getting this information from like basic craft books. Moving on to what has to be my favorite part, which is the dialogue. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I don't find that key. You promised me you wouldn't leave me here alone. I thought I'd never see you again. Why do you always have to be so stubborn? I can't believe you did that. You're sick. You're making a mistake. You'll regret this. So all kind of random, like they can't all be used in just any kind of conversation. So I thought it was interesting how specific it got. Specifically the one with the key really threw me. So next up we have the characters and it had a little bit more elaboration or I asked for like the character name, style, and then a little bit of backstory. So I thought it was interesting. This is kind of the base sum up of that. I'll definitely be using it to come up with character names. It's interesting also how like different stereotypes played into the descriptions that it got. I thought it was really interesting. So I got to work. I compiled this information and painstakingly spent about an hour crafting together a cohesive story that could also be pretty quick for AI to try and replicate. Here are some highlights of my process as I went through, given all the information I had to create kind of a cohesive plot. I think I'm gonna go for Unexpected Visitor because I like some of the characters that AI came up with. So, settings, small town bakery. Mm. I'm taking out Abandoned Amusement Park. I don't want it to be scary. I'm thinking more like contemporary reflective, maybe like a deep moment in there. I like a small town bakery. I think I'm gonna go with the bakery. We're gonna test AI's ability to describe smells. 
and mine. We'll see. The ba maybe she's like a baker or like the unexpected visitor is the baker who like wants to be a baker. What I'm thinking is a character face of the unexpected health crisis could be like the person who, the unexpected visitor who comes is there to tell them that either they're sick or like someone they know is sick to like become, or maybe they're like robbing the bakery so that they can get enough money. But like, why would a bakery have a lot of money? You know, it's fine, okay. Maybe the characters will help us decide. Oh, okay, we could see, we could get a little, like you've got mail action with Mr. Jackson here. He comes in and he's like, He's a businessman, he's building the family empire, he's gonna de demolish the bakery to like build his own, I don't know, like, what would be like a mainstream? He's gonna build a Starbucks over the heart and soul bakery of the town. We kinda love to see it, okay. He's in the, he's in the picture. I don't know about William, sorry William. Or maybe the um, dialogue will help us. So. We could go, I never thought I'd see you again. Maybe it's like a lost love and it's that Jack guy and he comes back as like a businessman now and he is, I don't know, coming to tell her that he's taking over the bakery. Maybe she's having a health crisis. I don't know, we'll see. Oh my gosh, okay. What if I take this? I can't believe you did that and then it goes to, you're sick. Like, it's a response. Like, take that AI, what are you gonna do about that? Okay, so, okay, it's coming together, it's coming together. So, I'm gonna go with Jackson Black here. He is her ex-husband, so our main character, let's see what AI had for us. She ran, no, she didn't run from the husband. She thought her husband was dead, no. She hasn't, they separated because he was too invested in his work. Like they're like, I don't think we need to put labels on it. She has terminal cancer. Starbucks is buying the bakery, but she didn't, okay, but she didn't tell him. There's a movie that does this exact plot, I think. At some point she says, I can't believe you did that. And then he says, you're sick. And then he is gonna like, maybe it's like a cute love story where he's like, did you push me away when all this was happening? And she's like, well, we were already, like you were so focused on work. And he's like, and then it's like a cute, like he quits his job to run the bakery. And then it's like a year later and he's running the bakery and she's dead. And maybe, okay, maybe it's from his perspective. No, it's from hers. Or maybe it's an omniscient. Maybe it's a three, it's a little piece of like a little side PV. But he says he would have gone with for her to take care of her. And then one year later, she's dead and he is running the bakery like realizing how precious his relationships are and how and like how money can't buy that what a cute story ai probably won't think of that maybe it will okay I was disturbed how good the AI's short story was. 
I really liked the ending of the AI one. Like, it kind of got me a little emotional. I was like, wow. But here's the thing, I was also very specific about what I put in. I gave it a lot of information. Like, I don't think the AI could have done that with just like, write a short story about a woman in a bakery. I only spent, I would say 50 minutes. Yeah, it was 50 minutes writing that short story. It's a first draft, it has not been edited. I would say weaknesses I find in it are definitely dialogue. I just kind of wrote general dialogue in a, in a revision. I would go back and like fine tune it, characterize it a little more, make sure every word has a punch. Um, I'd also say my ending is very weak. Um, just cause I wanted to kind of wrap it up. Did I scare you? Cause I'm, I'm a little afraid. I think it's a really useful tool. Like coming up with those characters, coming up with all of those different settings. Like I think a lot of authors fall into books feeling the same way or going into the same settings or kind of having the same characters. And I think AI can be a place to generate new ideas, to come up with something to check ourselves and also to find little things to inspire us, right? The minute it starts to replace our ability to come up with this content ourselves is the moment that it's gone too far. But I think that that's not something that can be regulated. Like there shouldn't be like, no one can use AI to write. Any piece of technology, any piece of social media, like we know how bad social media and TV is for our brains. Let me list, I'm gonna have AI generate 10 different studies telling me how bad social media is for me and how bad YouTube is for me and how bad microwaves are. Every piece of technology that exists has the potential to eliminate creativity, has the potential to make us lazier. But that doesn't mean that it also doesn't have really good effects. And it allows us to become, it can allow us to become more efficient in the things that are really mundane, that take a lot of mental willpower and that drain us so that we're unable to do those bigger creative things. Or if I need a new idea, or if I feel like my writing is trite, I don't know. I'm still on the fence about it, but I don't think it's the enemy. And like, what a story. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below because I'm, I've seen a lot of apocalyptic and like dystopian media. And I also know that humanity is a little scary sometimes. And so I know there's a huge potential, like the more advanced our technology gets, the higher the potential is that we can misuse the technology. Let me know how you guys are using AI maybe some hard rules. I think it's important for writers to like come up with some hard rules. I'm not going to use AI to write my dialogue. Maybe picking and choosing things, but I don't think it's immoral to use it where our weaknesses are because in the end that's going to create better stories, right?